Hey guys, Aaron Paletta here with Scar Lounge Scar Talk Show, and tonight we are actually at the Grand Resort in Warren, Ohio. There is the Lost and Found event with one of the founders, Tony Bellotto. They're inside. Me and Vince are freezing, so we're gonna head in there. We're also gonna talk to some guys once we're in there as well. Let's go inside. Hey guys, I'm inside here at the Grand Cigar Room. Uh, we're here with Matt. And Matt, actually, I gotta ask you, have you ever been to one of these smokers before? Never been to a function like this before, but you know, we come up. Okay, so you, uh, you, come up to, you come yep. up and enjoy cigars again? Yes, okay. absolutely. So what made you come up to this event tonight? Because they've had several events here in the past. I never knew that they did that before, but I received an email from Avalon and right. I saw it and I was like, you know what, I think that'd be something good to try. Okay, so. well, I can tell you a little bit about these cigars tonight. Um, I'm gonna be doing an, an interview with one of the founders, Tony, and these are a very specific line of well-aged tobaccos, and once they're gone, they're gone. Like, like you're smoking something that pretty much you and, and your buddy will and be able to say, hey, we smoke those. Oh, nice. So enjoy them, because you will never get them again. This one's been very good. You guys are enjoying them so far? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. I, I believe it's the last Thursday of every month they do the smokers here. So definitely. Oh, really? Definitely. That's, that's come, good to know that there's an actual out. date for it or day, you know, last Thursday of the month. I, I believe that's what they are. Well, good. I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. Thanks Thank for talking you. with me. Nice meeting you. Hey, guys. We're here with Lost and Found founder Tony Bellotta, who coincidentally also owns uh, the La Barba line. Correct. That, is, that is correct. And I have had every La Barba. Personally, that purple is beyond fantastic. Thank you very much. I, I love the purple. That. The orange, I would say, comes in a very close second. And the red, I heard what happened to your, your yeah. stock. So, so. If, if you haven't got the red, hurry up and get it because they will be discontinued here real quick. Discontinued for... The problem was we had a fire in our factory and I used a single farm, single family for our purple. Uh, it's called Carbonell Tobacco. And fortunately, the, the brand has grown to a size where I use all of that tobacco every year. And we had two crops of it in the warehouse when it burned down, as well as all of my cigars. So that tobacco was 10 years old. So in the next eight to nine years, we should be able to start regular production of purple again, but we're gonna try to put it out on a limited basis as we get the tobacco. So it. it's the purple and the red that's gonna yeah, be? Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, got it. And you have those over at the Havana houses, correct? We do. Okay, we do. so he owns the Havana houses over here in uh, Niles and the other one's in Boardman, correct? Yep. Okay, Niles and Boardman and here at the Grand Resort. So get them while you can, because they're gonna be gone here pretty soon. But tonight we're here at this event, which uh, he will be talking at, and I'd actually like you to explain this line that okay. you've got for the uh, Lost and Found cigar. So if you would, just tell yeah. them what they are. And so uh, Lost and Found started as kind of a passion project. It was just with between Robert Caldwell and I, when he would send me cigars from factories that were either a line was discontinued, a limited, for example, a limited edition, um, I can't name the companies, but we've worked with pretty, some pretty famous ones. Say the idea is to make a 2,000 cigar limited run. Well, what they'll do is in, to ensure that color, consistency, they'll make three or 4,000 of that cigar. Well, if those 2,000 cigars come out perfect, then the other 2,000 just go into a vault somewhere and are never seen again. Uh, when we started, <clears throat> we started Lost and Found, we started with very kitschy names, pepper cream soda, one night stand, and it was just a fun project to get well-aged cigars to people. Uh, since then, we've grown up, and we've been able to get access to more detailed information about the cigars and better access to high-end cigars. And that's where we started the antique line. So some of the antique line, we, ha we, get the, we have the vintages, so we have access to the vintages. We don't necessarily have information on all of the blends. We generally have information on wrapper just because we can tell by color. Um, but we have some really special stuff. Um, and it, this project comes from my background in wine. I went to school for wine <clears throat> originally. And I always thought it was odd that cigars never had vintages on them. We say that all the time on, on my episode. I, I think that cigars should because when you claim that you know you have the number one or the one that just went number one, right. you don't. 
what Correct. If, what if you have the one that actually was from the batch after? Because you know when the pledge went, everything got sold out. Correct. And then they had to, to get them again. Well, I had a box of the pledge before it was named and after, and there was a distinct difference. Well, that's that's why they do that. So that it, you know, they don't. It's just like with champagne's the same way. They don't they don't vintage the champagne, but when they do, it's very special. Uh, unfortunately for us, since we're not recreating these cigars. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. So this is a one and done. Yes. So all these, every single antique line, when they're gone, they're gone forever. We, we will not reproduce them. Some of them, and I have the boxes. Some of them only, we were only able to make one of one box. So I have that at my house. Some of them we've been able to make a hundred boxes. Some of them we've been able to make ten. So it all depends on how many of the cigars are left. Wow. Um, so in these packs tonight, there's there's different vintages in each pack, but the one that I have now, there's a 2004. Uh, Mexican San Andres Torpedo. There's a 2010 Colorado Claro, uh, and there's only one factory in the world that makes Colorado Claro. Uh, there's a 2006 Colorado Claro, a 17 Colorado Claro Maduro, and a 2006 Cumex uh, Ecuadorian Shade Colorado, Connecticut Shade, uh, which is, that one's actually, these two are my favorites. Um, this 2006 and the little guy was the cigar that was kind of like the jump start into the program. When I smoked this, I said, this is something we need to do that's special. Wait, no, let me see real quick. So, Vince, bring it in real quick. These two are the ones that Tony said was his favorite. Just so we have it. Yeah. Just that on there. And this is the, you said the far one, this one here? That's yeah. That's the one so that kick started the idea? So Rob sent me these cigars and said, smoke this. It's the be it's one of the best cigars I've ever smoked. And I smoked it and I was like fucking blown away. But the, the issue is, that I've smoked most of them, and whatever's in these bags, I think I have one more box left at, at the shop, and then that's it. And that's it, all gone. So, point being, if you didn't make it here tonight, you lose. So you should start coming to these a little bit more often. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tony, I appreciate you explaining this line. Uh, you're gonna be talking later on tonight, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, when you see the light in the camera, that's gonna be us again, I wanna get, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, thank you very right. much. We'll see you guys later. All right, guys, I'm here with Dylan, someone who I never get on camera. Never. Well, so I finally get him tonight. And you have smoked this entire line, correct? Of course. Okay. Then tell me, from one aficionado to another, what do you think? Well, I mean, the whole antique line is truly, truly very special. I mean, you can tell just with the vintages on the bands, they have extraordinary age. What do we normally smoke as consumers? Cigars that are at most a couple months to a year old? Yeah, maybe. I maybe. mean, a couple years if you get lucky enough to find it on the shelf that's already been there. So everything we have here, if you look, what is our absolute newest? 2017? Yeah, 2017, 2016, 2010, 12, and 06. So we're 5 to 15 years old, 16 years old right Okay, now. now when you think about it, when you get something with age like that, that's normally someone like me or you or Joe Vaughn who's been forgetting that they have them in their humidor oh, yeah. just so we have them to be able to say they're that old. Truly. So the fact that they're already coming pre-age like that, I mean, to me, that's, that's something special. And here's the other thing to keep in mind, Aaron. So that is the age that when they were rolled, this is not the age when the tobaccos themselves. This is when they rolled these? Yeah. That's what I was told. That okay, was, cause I'll say, because I already interviewed Tony and he didn't tell me that. What I was told, and I won't say I'm 100% correct because I'm not part of this company. These are the years that those are finalized and put into the aging room itself. Now, I recall when this 06 came out, seeing that the box had some notation on the age of the tobaccos. And you'll have to ask Tony a little bit more about this notation on this box. Yeah, I might have to uh, get him again. This is truly a very special product. I am going to make a shameless plug here if you guys really want to know a bit more too. The Lost and Found Instagram page has posts on all of them. And some of the original posts had some outstanding little tidbits. Okay, well I'm big on Instagram, so I'll have to go and actually track that page and down so I can find you it. Too. Right on those boxes, there's a little notation. If you guys smoke these, do not punch these. They are very delicate. A straight cut is very ideal. A V cut, if you're delicate, is not bad, but do not punch them. There's actually no easy way to be delicate with a V cut, so just go with your guillotine or your scissors. And I mean sharp guillotine, sharp scissors. Correct. Well, cool, man. I appreciate you talking yeah, of with Of course. Now, if you're going to go ahead, 
and have your consumers smoke any of these. Have them start with something like the 06. So, Ben, come here. Let's, he said, let's start with the 06. That thing is mild, it's creamy, it's floral, it's rich. It is just beautiful. You can tell them, too, about the 14 you have. The 14 is another one of their more yeah, mild offerings. This 14 is fantastic. Now, as you look through the rest, the beautiful thing that I've noticed with this whole line, and we each pack we highlighted a slightly different part of that vintage because we have all kinds of different vintages available. You can really almost tell, because they are very classically blended, that color on that wrapper, follow your gut a little bit. You know, the Colorados are a nice, beautiful medium body. You're gonna get this nice little bit of a rich spice to them. The Maduros have that nice natural sweetness. There's an 04 that's not in this pack. It's a Maduro that's a torpedo. Classic, classic now, Maduro. Other than the people that are here tonight, if somebody sees this and wants to get these, do, are they still for sale? Like, do you have them here at the Grand Resort? So we may have some hidden off here on a very limited basis. So you have to ask. But the best thing I can say is just ask around, ask us, me, Jovan, anyone who works here that is one of our staff members. Ask Tony Bellotto, ask Robert Caldwell, message their page. There are some different uh, tobacconists across the country who got very, very, very limited amounts. I may or may not actually have an exclusive at home that when we do our interview, I might bring you one that is not available. You didn't hear that. You didn't hear that at all. Right, exactly. So uh, just keep looking around. The whole line is outstanding. It is truly, truly the epitome of what us as consumers will probably find as each tobacco, unless we're we're getting stuff in our humidors, we're buying at auctions. Anything that, you know, you have to dig a little bit more, this does the work for us. Wonderful. Cool. Well, there you got the insight from Dylan. I appreciate it, man. My Let's see who we can get next. Hi. Hey, guys, we're here with Greg, and he uh, you're a regular patron, correct? Yeah, I correct? come here every morning. Yes. Okay, because every time I'm up here, you're here. Yes, I am. So, very dedicated to this place. I've seen you at the other smokers before. I figured you were going to be here, but of all the smokers, can you tell me why did you want to come to this one in particular? I wanted to try these uh, cigars here. The antique line. Yeah, the antique ones. Uh, they said, you know, they're all tobacco. I wanted to see what the, the yeah, no, I, was and how they were. I was already able to interview Tony, and he said, like, I think these two right here were his favorites, and this is the one that started the idea. Oh, really? So if he's talking like that over them, They've got to be tasty. They must be. I'm going to try that next. I've got a parenthesis on my father's right now. Oh, you can't go wrong with that one no, either? you can't go wrong with that. I came in earlier and I bought it. Well, I think I'm actually going to be starting off with this one, because if he said that this is the one that made him have the idea, like that's the one, that's the one I'm going yeah, with that's tonight. that's going to be my next try that. Well, it was good seeing you tonight. Nice seeing Thanks you Thanks for talking too. to me. Yeah, you take care. Yep. All right, guys, I'm here with Matt from Heidelberg uh, Distributing, and he's actually going to talk about some of the wines that we have for tonight's smoker. So, Matt, if you if you would please. All right, so the first wine that we have here is a 2006 vintage champagne. It's by uh, Charles de Casanova, very famous champagne producer. The vintage is 2006. Now, I, I've already, this is what they started me off with yeah, tonight. Yeah, Big fan. Nice. Big, big fan of this one. It had almost reminded me a little bit of... Um, uh, like the dryness you would get from a fruit, right? But it was perfect. It well, was so. It was perfect. So what this is? This is a vintage fruit, and when you get aged champagne, some of that sharpness fades away, and it brings out a little bit more more of the fruit. And this one was able to uh, keep the bubbles. You yeah, know? Yeah, because when, when I did my initial swirl and I took my sniff of it, it was pure apple juice. Is what it smelled yeah. like. It was yeah. fantastic. But, and what's the, the next one we got here? So uh, this is uh, Chateau Clark. This is actually a Rothschild uh, property uh, purchased in 1973 by the Rothschild family. 70% Merlot and 30% Cabernet Sauvignon. 70-30. Uh, yeah. Nice. So it's uh, what would be classified as a right bank Bordeaux. So Lestroc, Madoc is the area that it's from. And, uh, and yeah, so they've been making wine for since 1771 and uh, just put a lot of money into the vineyard and they're making fantastic wine. So pre-revolutionary war. Yep. That's absolutely. a long damn time. 
um, these are the only two I've actually been able to try so far, so I'll be paying attention on these next two. Well, so this one is uh, by Xavier Vignon. Other than having one of the coolest names ever, he's kind of like a mad scientist when it comes to the Rhone Valley wines. He doesn't have a vineyard. He actually has um, a, has a laboratory, and all of his customers are some of the most famous uh, producers in the Rhone Valley. So what happened here is, a customer of his has had this wine aging in a barrel since 2000. So this wine was bottled in 2020 and actually saw 20 years of age in, in, the, that, barrel in the barrel. Yeah. Wow. So what that does is it'll lighten it up. It'll it'll not quite have as much body as a fresher Chateauneuf de Pop, but it's uh, more of, more of a symbiotic nature. So on a molecular level, all those all those varieties in that wine make uh, absolutely special uh, special wine. Very limited, very hard to get. Sweet, because that's the next one I'm going to get after after you and I chat. Me too. <laughs> you too. And what's the final one here? This is uh, Chateau Doisy Dane du Braca. So uh, originally Doisy Dane uh, partnered with their neighbor du Braca, Chateau du Braca. And what my company did was we bought out all of the Sauterne in their cellars when uh, Chateau uh, Doisy, uh, they uh, merged with their other neighbor, Verdine. So they're now a different company. So this you can't buy. You can only buy this on the secondary market and here at Avalon. So, so if you want this particular wine, another reason to come down to the Grand Resort. And, and is this the only location that has that, just the Grand Resort? Yes. So yeah. it's not all the Avalon? No. Okay, no. so even better. No. you got to come here to get it. So 1979 Sauterne. And what a Sauterne is, it's a, it's a sweeter style wine. There's a place uh, south of Bordeaux where, uh, where a uh, mold attaches to the grapes, Savion Blanc and Semillon grapes, and the mold sucks out that moisture. So then they press these grapes in virtually just a tiny bit of water and sugar. And these wines can age for for a century. So very special wine. Wow. Well, I appreciate you breaking those down for me. I'm My gonna pleasure. go try the last two. All right, man. Thanks. My pleasure. All right, guys, I'm here with Joe Vaughn. Uh, so another smoker on the books. Another smoker, the last smoker of the year. That's very sad, actually. It is. But I'm glad to be here tonight. I'm glad you put these on. So I, I haven't actually done any um, episodes yet, like at one of these events. I've taken pictures and stuff like that. This is the first one that we're actually going to do. But I'm glad we started with this particular line. So since you've already smoked them as well and you, you put on this event, why don't you tell tell everybody what you think of this line? So with the antique line, I don't know if they gave you a little bit of history. I, I think you interviewed Tony. Yeah, Tony did, yeah. Uh, Lost and Found is a great company where they go to different factories and they buy bales of super aged tobacco. Um, they kind of go through them, pick them, which the, the nicest, most aged tobacco bales they could possibly get. And with that, um, they roll up as many cigars as they can with the band on it. And with Lost and Found, They'll make as many as they possibly can, but once they're gone, they're gone, and they'll never reproduce them again. Yeah, that's, that's what, pretty that's, cool. That's what Tony was saying. So, like, once once they're done, they're done. Period. So today, with this smoker, uh, it's a sold out event. I'm very happy about that. Last of the year, uh, we did these uh, long aged cigars, lost and found, with um, 10 plus year aged wines, uh, hosted by Heidelberg uh, Distribution. Uh, all French wines. We did a 2006 champagne that pairs good with uh, this 2006 that uh, Dylan was talking about. It is a fantastic cigar, very mild, very creamy. Uh, the one you were smoking oh, yeah, had a little 14. bit of spice to it. Um, nothing too bold, um, but you could def definitely t taste um, the age of the tobacco. You definitely, a lot of times when. It almost has a refinement to it because the longer the age, the longer the pneumonia comes out of the tobacco and if they store it right, it's a very smooth, it usually gets smoother with age. Um, just like wine, if you, if you store it properly, it gets better with time. Same thing with cigars. So I think with the theme that we're doing today, just kind of just worked out perfectly. Yep. Well, I've already been able to try uh, the first two wines on that list. 
um, which actually I want to see if I can get the wine guy to talk about those. But yeah, I sure. was able to get the first two, yeah, and the first one, with, first one I was a, I was a big fan yeah, of. Yeah, 2006 uh, Stradivarius Champagne. Then we uh, the second one we went to uh, Rothschild 2012 Bordeaux. Um, this is like the fun part of my job because I get to pair stuff that I. I probably tried these cigars when they first came into to the state about a year ago, and the fact that they were still available to do this smoker, I already like had things in mind that right. kind of like what would go good with you it. You already knew where you wanted to send this. Yeah, um, we got a 2000 shot to know if they pop, um, and then we're gonna finish it with a 1979 uh, Sauterne, which is uh, a sweet white uh, French wine that pairs good with uh, the food that we have displayed too is fantastic. I don't know if you got shots I, I of have, that. I haven't, but I, I saw it out there. We should get yeah. some, some footage of it. So we just try, with the smokers, we try to, whether it's whiskey, cognac, bourbons, we try to find a perfect pairing on what would really go great with the cigars. And that's kind of the experience that with the smokers. Uh, we truly, we re really try to make it an experience, an event. And uh, just like the, the cost of the cigars is pretty much almost the cost of the ticket. But you get aged wine on top of that. You get food on top of that. So it kind of just elevates the, the well, type of event that we're trying to put on this here. Is, this is the fifth smoker I've been to so far. I did unfortunately miss the LFD one. But I recommend anybody who's in this area do come down because, I mean, you can't go wrong. I mean, these right here, these are 50 bucks just for the cigar pack. Okay, not to mention the wines and the food, so it is worth every penny to come down here. Yeah. And then you get to experience it with everybody in this yeah, room. you get to meet a lot of cool new people, um, people who love cigars, and that's what the great thing about the whole culture and the environment is just smoking great cigars, having a good time. Uh, we try to do uh, one a month. Uh, usually we try to make it the last Thursday of every month, um, giving the brand or, or whatever. You know, we got Tony for this one. Uh, I mean, he helps pick out and make the cigars. So when we could get the principles of companies, like that's just a highlight on top of that. Um, it's a great, great experience. If you have questions, uh, with like you said, you missed the LFD one, but you w went to a couple to to be able to interact with the people that are selling it or creating it. You could kind of just pick their brain and kind of be like, why did why was this blended this way? Yeah, and, and what they, was the concept of this? And they love to tell you. Like they're, they're not hesitant to actually tell you why they did it. They will open up and tell you. And you talk about, you know, these smokers, everybody's having a good time. You will not see a sad face in here tonight. No, I don't think so. Everybody's I mean, smiling. Everybody's happy. Wine, cigars. Food. Food and, and a, you know, just a great community of cigar lovers. It's great. Right. I appreciate it, man. Right, thank, thank you, man. You. Appreciate Let's it. go find someone else. All right, guys, we're here with Michael, and he comes to every single event that the Grand Resort puts on. So can you tell me, because you're not new to this, no, no. what do you enjoy the most about coming to these things? I love it. It's good uh, good self-care for me as a veteran, as a father, oh, as veteran. a husband. Absolutely. Thank you yep. for your service. Oh, my pleasure. Best job I ever had. So oh. I love it. It's, uh, you know, it's good, good self-care, watch the football games, sporting events. Well, you know, I, yeah. I was, we were talking with Javon, mm -hmm. and Javon was talking about how everybody's having a good time here, and, and, I, and I made the comment of, uh, you will not see an unhappy face in this room. As all these events that you've come to, have you ever seen a sad face? Never, 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 exactly. never, never. Smoke cigars, they make you happy. Absolutely. So what do you think about the one you're smoking tonight? This is the 2017, absolutely love it. Love I, it, love it, love it. Is this the only one that you smoke tonight? Yeah, this is my first one, yeah. First one. Okay, I got the 14. Okay. And this thing is impeccable draw. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. The pepper finally died off on this. Okay. Thing. This thing was spicy from the get-go. Yeah. What, what are you tasting inside this? Or do you not pull notes like I do? Leather, uh, not bright leather, darker leather. Um, not like a heavy, not a heavy hitter full body. I'd say medium. Excellent though, so, excellent. You know, I was able to actually interview uh, Tony, and he's, and I'm pretty sure he said, or Joe Warner, Dell, one of them, interviewed too many people tonight. They said that this is pretty much a medium line. Okay. So the only thing that made mine stand out a little bit more is the fact that that spice was there, but I mean, as far as strength is concerned, yeah, it's, it's about medium, it's perfect. Excellent. For, for this late at night, it's perfect. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And then the older you get, the more you're up at night yeah. for them, but eh. Now, can you, 
Can you recommend anything to people who haven't come here yet for an event? Or even just come to this, this lounge? It's awesome. Great camaraderie. Uh, everyone's a gentleman, gentlewoman. Takes all kinds, every walk in place. Gentle women. Yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, gentlewomen. That's, so. that's a new one. I like that one. I might actually have to adopt that and use it. That's fine. Gentlemen and gentlewomen, you're all you're all welcome. Yeah, it's a good time. Great, great, great. We always have a great group. Everyone's friendly. It's a beautiful place. Everyone's casual. Makes you feel right at home. Casual. Look, I missed that. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you get my shoes? But you're approachable too. So. I, I am. I, I love talking to people. I love being around people. Sure. Like, I appreciate hey, you being on pleasure. here. Pleasure. Absolutely. Right, Thanks for coming out. Uh, first, we're going to uh, talk to Matt Brampton. Uh, he is the Heidelberg rep. Um, he, he and I picked out the vintages and the different wines you got to try today. And he's just going to give you a little history about the vineyards and what you guys got to try today on that. So, Matt. All right. So, the first wine, the champagne that you tried, is by Charles E. Casanova. It's part of the Stradivarius line. So he made champagne. Uh, very few of the wines does he make. Uh, make it to the Stradivarius, Melissa Mead level that you have this evening. Um, we're in the business of buying wine. Sometimes you buy it and it's a little cheaper, and sometimes you buy it and it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, this is uh, this vintage, it's on its way out. We have very little of it in the state. If you like it, we can attempt to get you some. However, if you want something truly special, uh, there is a limited edition bottle that they have here for $100 uh, retail. It comes in a beautiful gold bottle, and it's also uh, by the same uh, by the same producer. But uh, just a little bit about the wine. So it's 60% Chardonnay, 40% Pinot Noir, uh, 2006 vintage. I thought it drank wonderfully, uh, and, uh, and everyone seemed to enjoy, enjoy it as well. A little bit about the Casanova family in France. This is known as the uh, Champagne of Artists. Um, so uh, very popular in France, and it's only been in the United States for a short amount of time. Um, the Bordeaux that you drank is a recent investment by the Rothschild family. Uh, the vineyard Chateau Clark has been around since 1771, actually owned by an Irish family, uh, purchased by the Rothschilds in 1983. They pumped a bunch of dough into it, uh, made it uh, world-class winemaking facility. If you like it, what's here, I believe there's six bottles left, that's it. That's all that's ex in existence in the secondary market. Um, so uh, it is a special wine. If you like it, I do encourage you to try it. Uh, Xavier Vignon, Chateau de Pops. Other than having one of the coolest names you have here, Xavier Vignon is kind of a mad scientist in the Rhone Valley. Uh, he does uh, he does actual science work, uh, immunology for all of the Rhone, uh, basically all the famous producers in the Rhone Valley, particularly in chateauneuf du -Pas. In chateauneuf du -Pas, he doesn't accept money. He will only take wine or grapes. He selects the wine, he selects the grapes. This is wine that was at a uh, customer of his. It's been sitting in a barrel since 2000. Sitting in a barrel since 2000 until 2020. So, and uh, then he bottled it then and uh, aged it for a year and then we got it here. Very little bit of it in the state. I think there's a total of 24 bottles in one of our seven warehouses in the state. If you really like it, I can beg, I can plead uh, to get some. I could probably get some here. We do have about six bottles here. Again, very special, super, super limited production. Uh, again, all his wines are fantastic. Uh, they have a few other wines on the list by him. They're all different. He never makes the same thing. Uh, Grenache, Syrah, Syrah Mouvedre are the primary grapes uh, in that cuvee. And the last one, uh, probably the rarest of all of them, is uh, the 1979 Doisy Dane Dubraca. Uh, originally, uh, Doisy Dane partnered with their neighbors Dubraca. Now they're Dubraca uh, Chateau Doisy Verdine. Um, so they changed their, they, they uh, joined up with their neighbor um, and got the Dubrakas out of there. So what we did, we went in, we bought their entire cellar. So we had a huge vertical of these wines. Uh, Avalon was lucky enough to buy some of the vintages. If you truly love this, I believe there's only three more bottles here. 
Um, if you love Sauterne, I will tell you there's a few other vintages of this Sauterne available. Uh, the 75 is my favorite. There's a few bottles of that. Um, and I believe there's some um, 77. But uh, they'll all be priced the same. And, uh, and Brian and Javon will be able to get those wines. But uh, I hope you all enjoy vintage wine. It's one of my most favorite, uh, favorite things uh, to drink. And uh, thank you all so much for coming. All right. Tonight, if you got any questions for Matt, kind of take his brain. You could do that. He knows a ton about different wines and different vintages and all that. So feel free. That's what he's here for today. And thank you, Matt, for coming. I really appreciate it. And the Heidelberg uh, distribution. You guys really do great. Thanks for having me. Now we're going to talk about the cigars lost and found. Uh, this is uh, co-owner Tony Bellotto. Uh, he teamed up with uh, Robert Codwell based out of Miami, and they have a really great concept on what they do with the Lost and Found Cigars. You got a five pack today, and hopefully you really enjoyed them. He's going to talk about the different antique line that you guys got to get today. Thank you, Joe, for having me. Since we're talking about vintages, I have a vintage in the back that is from 1972. His name is Gino Bellotto. <laughs> My dad's been in the cigar business for 50 years, and <clears throat> throughout that I've made a number of relationships, and one of those relationships I've made is with a lot of cigar factories, and I produce my own line called La Barba Cigars, and now a lot of premium cigars. Um, we have a specific factory in Dominican Republic that we make all of our stuff in that we blend. Uh, Lost and Found was a concept that was accidentally created through us getting into a gigantic argument with our manufacturer in Honduras. It's a long story, I won't bore you with it. Short story is that in that interim, we were visiting different cigar factories in Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Honduras, and finding these wonderful cigars that were <clears throat> either brands that were going out of business or people that didn't pay their bills. Or for example, if you make a limited edition of a cigar, you would make, four, if, it, if it was a limited edition of 2,000 cigars, you'd make 4,000 just to make sure that 2,000 were acceptable. Well, sometimes all 4,000 are acceptable. So we had this off the whim idea between Robert and I sending cigars back and forth to each other to bring these wonderful cigars to market. And when we started, we were putting kitchen names on them, like pepper cream soda, one night stand. We actually have one called Swollen Cock at one point. I don't know. It was a long journey and we were very young. But we developed relationships with these manufacturers and they've started to give us actual, we have to sign non disclosures now, but they give us actual dates and actual cigars that had information on them and that's where Antique came from. The evolution of Lost and Found is we're now producing cigars. We have been for the past 15 years. Since we are 12 years since we started this, um, that would be the 22 minutes to midnight, a couple other things. But needless to say, these cigars are they are cigars that have been sitting in Dominican Republic warehouses since the date that they've been on the van. That's not the date they were made. That's how old they've been. That's how long they've been sitting in the factory. We found them, and everybody's pack is kind of different because there's so little of them. We can't give you the same pack. Uh, I can tell you what everything is because I know what year is what wrapper is what what. But these cigars are very special. We'll never, literally, these 50 packs that we sold tonight, these cigars will never be smoked again. So the cigars you're smoking tonight are the cigars that basically are extinct. Um, they're very special. We hand selected them. They're very delicate, so be careful with them. Um, Lost and Found is a company that just basically wants to give you guys, our consumers, great cigars for a great price that you couldn't normally get off the shelf with the big manufacturers. So I want to thank Jovan and Avalon and the whole crew, Matt, 
and everybody that works here for supporting my brands, La Barba, Caldwell, Lost and Found. If you have any questions about the cigars or if you hate them, please tell me because I like <laughs> people come up to me and tell me your cigar fucking sucks. Because <laughs> I have to fix that problem. So I'm an open book. Tell me if it's good. Tell me if it's bad. If you have any questions about it, wrapper, binder, filler, I have the answers. So enjoy the rest of your evening and thank you very much. All right, thanks. 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 Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday, and uh, Happy New Year as well. Uh, we will be having more going into next year. We're working out the details as well. And thank you for always supporting us here at Avalon and Grammar Thanks.